health, wellness, fitness, relationships, and everything in between. We're removing the taboo from what really matters in midlife. I'm your host, Michelle Folan, and this is Asking for a Friend. Your mouth matters and is the true gateway to superior whole body health. So you floss, you try to be a gentle brusher, and get to the dentist twice a year. Well, most of the time, right? But what else can we do to ensure that seemingly minor oral problems don't point to a bigger health concern? Dr. Sonda Moldavan is recognized internationally for her expertise in oral health, nutrition, and anti-aging. With two board certifications in periodontics and nutrition, she brings an uncommon level of well-rounded knowledge to biological dentistry with a holistic approach. She is also the author of the book, Heal Up. She's the founder of the company, Orasana, and a podcaster. And the name of her podcast is The Holistic Dentistry Show. Welcome to Asking for a Friend, Dr. Sonda Moldavan. Thank you very much, Michelle. It's a pleasure to be here. And I'm so glad I did not botch your last name. And I'm so <laughs> glad we can just call you Dr. Sonda. So welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. I would love for you to just kind of kick things off with kind of filling in some of the holes around where you went to school, where you're from, uh, family details, if you'd like to share, and then a little bit more about your practice. Yes. Well, I finished my periodontal residency in 2004 at UCLA. And what really started me on this path of natural health is um, just my curiosity in uh, the fact that I was doing the same surgery on two different people, but one would heal great and one would heal horrible. Mm. So I'm like, what is it? Uh, you know, and in school, we're really taught about our skills. We're really not taught about nutrition and the healing and what can we do to optimize that. So I started researching and going to the Institute of Functional Medicine and really looking into nutrition and the science of nutrition. Gabriel Cousins was a, my first book that I picked up. It's called Conscious Eating, which I absolutely loved uh, in the, you know, the science of enzymes and probiotics. He's an MD, and I really respect research because being a researcher myself, I really want to know that, hey, is there evidence-based science that I could bring to my patients and help them heal better? So that's how I started back in 2006. I ended up getting a certification in nutrition through um, the Board of Nutrition Specialists. And I started incorporating a lot of the personalized nutrition and supplementation. And in people that I did surgery before, I had to do a second surgery for another side. They all reported, oh my God, this side was so much easier. I healed so much faster. So I'm like, wow, there's something to this. And I really dove a lot into, into researching. I put a lot of my uh, findings in my book, Heal Up, that was published in 2018 about healing uh, you know, from oral surgery. Because a lot of people ask me, hey, is there a magic pill that I can take to heal better? Well, unfortunately, there isn't. You know, We have to have the right hydration, nutrition, supplementation, rest, uh, mindset, sleep. This is all, you know, important part of healing. So, so here I am today, uh, you know, with a it really, we have a unique approach in my practice at Beverly Hills Dental Health and Wellness. We have three locations in Southern California and uh, our mission is just to help detoxify the mouth for a healthier body. Well, and I, I love your approach because a lot of what you're doing to help people heal more quickly are some of the baseline good habits that we should try to have anyway. It's funny, like your mouth is part of your whole body biome, right? And the one thing too is that it just is just more of a comment. When people have mouth pain or dental pain, it can stop them in their tracks. And I can only imagine some of the procedures that you've done on people have been life-changing for them. Absolutely, Michelle. Um, a lot of my patients who come in have chronic fatigue. They don't feel well. They have brain fog. And now I'm trying to find out uh, how can we address the mouth, take out all the inflammation to help them heal better. 
then I, I think you're kind of defining for me the difference between holistic dentistry and general dentistry is where you're really looking at the whole patient rather than just their mouth. That's right. I like to say we treat the whole body, not the hole in your mouth. Got it. A lot of dentists, traditional dentists really look at, okay, teeth, and it's separated from the rest of the body. But, but there's such an interconnection between, as you mentioned, the microbiome of the mouth, you know, that's just the opening of the GI tract. So of course, anything, you know, we put in our mouth will affect the gut, uh, it will absorb, it will affect the way we feel. So we look at how our teeth, let's say root canal treated teeth, affecting the whole generalized inflammation or the microbiome, which is inflammatory, affecting the gut. This is the things that we do. What are some of the biggest challenges that you see for midlife women in regard to oral health? The majority of our patients are actually midlife women. <laughs> Interesting. Because we take care, I feel like, you know, and I'm in that category, I feel we take care of ourselves and we take care of our families and, and kind of encourage everybody around us to stay healthy. The biggest problems that we see, you know, in the midlife as our hormones change is drier mouth, for example, drier eyes. And with that dryness of the mouth, we actually see a change in the microbiome. And that can actually create more bad breath and more gingival or gum inflammation. Mm -hmm. The second thing that I see is a brittleness of the teeth. And that is also in, in a way due to the fact that the mouth is drier, the teeth are not mineralizing as well. So now we're experiencing more sensitivity. And I'm even seeing in myself that my two front teeth, I'm you know, right at the edge, they're starting to slowly chip mm -hmm. and become more translucent. And that's basically why is that happening? You know, teeth are actually bone. So as our bones, you know, get more brittle as we age, so do teeth. So the mouth is really a reflection of what's going on in the body. Well, and here's the other thing too. We may have sleep issues. So if you are a mouth breather, you have some apnea, that can also add to the dry mouth Yes, absolutely. And, you know, sleep apnea is a big problem. Uh, like almost 30% uh, of the population has some kind of sleep apnea problem. So what, what is sleep apnea is basically when we go to sleep, we're not able to get enough oxygen because the tongue falls in the back of the throat. And now, you know, we're not getting enough oxygen to the brain. And the brain perceives that as stress. Huge problem. It has a 47% risk of dying in our sleep. Mm which is huge. And I highly encourage, and it's a, it's a problem for men and women alike, you know, especially, you know, in, in our midlife, everything gets more laxed, especially the back of the throat, the tongue. So there's more laxity there. So now maybe we weren't snoring 10 years ago. Now all of a sudden we're seeing, oh my God, my partner is complaining that I'm snoring. <laughs> so uh, luckily, you know, there's ways for us as dentists to treat that. And I was, that was going to be one of my questions. So if, if you do, have sleep apnea and you're not quite ready to do a CPAP machine, are there things that you can do for a patient to help alleviate some of that sleep apnea? I'm glad you're asking this question because we have new technology today that a lot of people don't know about. And a lot of my patients, they're like, I hate wearing a, an appliance. I just don't want to wear it. And CPAPs are very difficult to wear. The other uh, treatment that we have upcoming today is a laser treatment with a laser called Photona, and it's called a night lace procedure. And what's amazing about this procedure is that it doesn't have any downtime. We actually use a laser to shrink the collagen in the back of the throat to open up the airway. It's about a 30 to 40 minute procedure, and we don't even need to numb People just feel a warmth in the back of the throat and we get, uh, it's, it's about 89 to 90% successful from the first, just one treatment to actually stop snoring and completely eradicate sleep apnea. Are you kidding me? Okay. This is, I've not heard of this. This is really fascinating. I mean, remember back in, it was, must've been the eighties. They were talking about loud laser assisted uvula palatoplasty or whatever, oh, right? Yes. And so many people very painful. very painful and and doesn't work. 
really for most people. Yeah. And actually what well, we used to happen, one of the complications from that is people would eat food and it would actually come out, you know, in their nose mm-hmm. because it would regurg it just wasn't a stop there. So yeah, this 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 is a total game changer, the night lace procedure compared to the uvula plastic. Okay. All right. This is really cool stuff. See? That's why I have you on the show. Yeah. All right. <laughs> With midlife women, we may have bone health issues, right? We've got osteoporosis. Is there a tie-in between our overall bone health and the health of our teeth? Definitely. Uh, As I mentioned earlier, you know, bone, uh, teeth are bone, right? Yeah. Teeth are bone. And if you look at the structure of the teeth, it's the same mineral complex and structure as our bone. And we know that, you know, over 50, especially there's an over 50% uh, risk of uh, having osteopenia, osteoporosis. So uh, we see a porosity developing in the teeth. Luckily, addressing the teeth porosity is a lot easier than addressing the bone porosity. Uh, One of the important things, I think, um, in the midlife is to check the pH of the saliva. We have to look at, okay, why are teeth getting brittle? If we have an acidic pH in our saliva, then uh, what happens is the minerals will dissolve. So we want to keep an alkaline saliva. So a seven point, above 7.0. So how do we test this? Very easy. First thing you wake up in the morning, use a, a, like a litmus paper, like a strip. I recommend the one that has the two color um, swatches on it is more accurate. And just basically just pull a little bit of saliva on the tip of the tongue and swipe this litmus paper on it. And it'll give you an accurate reading of where you're at. If you're acidic, there's ways to to, um, alkalinize that based on diet and based on hydration. And that'll basically stop the teeth from being sensitive. Another way to basically stop the progression of the tooth porosity or or tooth loss, uh, tooth structure loss, is to stop any kind of mouthwashes that are acidic, such as Listerine. Listerine has a pH as wine. So why would anybody switch for two minutes with wine? You know? <laughs> so. <laughs> well, and, and so here's the other question, because I did have a guest on the show. She's a nutritionist and she really cautioned against using any kind of mouthwash that would disrupt bacteria only because it's the gateway to our microbiome, right? And so yes. you have some alternatives then that you recommend? Yes, I I agree with that 100%. No mouthwash is necessary. Actually, it can be detrimental to our microbiome and not only to our microbiome, but our ability to make nitric oxide, which is so important for blood pressure. There was actually a study done that people who use mouthwash have a significantly increase in blood pressure than people who don't. But the one way to mineralize teeth, because as we live longer, we want to have our teeth around, is to use a calcium hydroxy appetite toothpaste or tooth powder. Studies have shown that uh, nano calcium hydroxy appetite, which is basically the same structure that the tooth is made out of, can penetrate into the pores of the teeth and actually strengthen the enamel. Uh, We will see typically not only uh, like a decrease in sensitivity, but less tooth wear over time. I'll put all this in the show notes. So if you have any links or anything, we will, we'll put those in the show notes because this is really good information. And if people are driving, they're not going to be able to write this down. All right. Back to the mouth rinse question. A listener asked the question, if I have serious halitosis though, what are my options to help improve my breath? Great question. And halitosis is something that comes with a dryness of the mouth as well. One of the things I recommend first is to look at your mouth, do a little self-exam, stick your tongue out and look to see, do you have a coating on your tongue? The halitosis, first, we need to address the oral hygiene. A lot of people don't brush their tongue and 60% of the bacteria and fungus lies on the surface of the tongue. So if the tongue is white, start scraping it. The best thing is to use a tongue scraper to remove the dead cells and the bacteria that's stuck there. That will itself improve breath. The second thing that I recommend is using a chewable probiotic. 
I personally work on a formulation, part of the Orasana line, uh, because I'm very fascinated by the way friendly bacteria helps us with our longevity and well-being, especially when it comes to the mouth. Um, and certain strains of bacteria actually will help populate uh, and decrease the biofilm of the mouth uh, in order to provide a uh, fresher breath. Okay. That, that's a great answer because I know people are trying not to use as many mouth rinses because of the microbiome issue. And, but if, could you have halitosis because of something internally that is undiscovered? Definitely. So, um, because the mouth is the opening of the GI tract, halitosis can come from the stomach, could be SIBO related. Uh, intestinal overgrowth of bacteria, basically. Also, we find that people who are constipated have bad breath. That we really need to have, you know, the GI moving, expelling toxins on a regular basis. So, so we really need to correct the entire GI tract in order to have good breath. One of the things we're noticing with the chewable probiotic, some of it is trickling down into the stomach and uh, ours are filled with xylitol and xylitol is known for decreasing the population of pathogenic bacteria, not just in the mouth, but also in the airways as well as the throat. And by the way, halitosis can come from the throat, especially if people have tonsils that have crypts full with bacteria. Mm that we can also get halitosis from there. So yeah, it's really... <laughs> I'm just sitting here going, oh, there's just so many places this the bacteria can hide. It's like, oh my God. Yeah. So we have to learn to nurture good bacteria, you know, and using mouthwash, a lot of people do it because they want to kill bacteria in their mouth. It's not the right approach. Let's nourish the good bacteria and the good biofilm instead of focusing on killing the bad one. And we get better results. I have this one question for you. I, I, I know what your answer is going to be, but I have to ask it because I know some people have a daily habit of drinking soda, even diet. And what are the long-term issues with drinking these beverages? Yes. And it, it is an addiction. And that, that's a, a difficult thing for people to beat. The problem with soda is so acidic that it weakens our bones. And our teeth alike, because, you know, there's a strong correlation between the two. So we definitely see a decrease in pH in the body for people who drink soda. And therefore, that decrease in pH, and of course, in the mouth as well, will create a loss of mineral in both the teeth and the bone. And the only way to really stop that is, you know, to stop drinking soda. You know, the sugar content that's in the soda. We see such severe tooth wear in people who drink soda and then grind at night. Because mm. what they're doing now, uh, you know, the teeth are already so brittle and you're grinding. We have this one particular patient. Um, she came to us, you know, in her 40s and her teeth were worn to half the size oh. that they should be. And she started being in so much pain. She couldn't even eat, eat normal foods anymore because the, the damage to the teeth was so close to the nerve she had a hard time eating anything. So um, very, very important to stop the tooth loss in, in time so we can uh, preserve things as we get older. This is, this is a side note, but I have to tell you this story. So my daughter, when she was in grade school, did a science fair project and we took tarnished pennies and put them in soda. And just... Oh yeah, what, what happened to them? <laughs> <laughs> they got clean. The, the, the tarnish <laughs> came off, but it, the, the diet soda was some of the worst yes. in, in terms of the anti-tarnishing uh, capabilities. So great for your silver, I guess, but not so great for your teeth. Um, so anyway. <laughs> yeah. But I, what I recommend <laughs> from a nutrition perspective, uh, Michelle, if somebody wants to beat soda, they say, well, do you have a healthier alternative? I would say to start is like mineral water, right? But true mineral water, like... Uh, you know, let's see, Gerolsteiner is one of the most uh, more alkaline mineralized waters, Pellegrino, things like that. Just start putting maybe a little bit of like orange flavor in it, squeeze a fresh orange in it to, to give you some flavor with less sugar and less trauma on the teeth. All right. Great advice. Receding gums can be a huge issue for adults. How can we 
minimize more recession? And this was another question from a listener. Her doctor is threatening her with having surgery. I would like to know what that entails, the the surgery. And then is there anything that we can do to help minimize any of that additional recession to stave off the inevitable? Great question. As a periodontist, uh, my specialty is gums. I always like to look at exactly what you mentioned, prevention. One of the biggest things uh, that's a, you know, it's a problem with recession is as we age, the collagen fibers shrink and we see it in our face. You know, we see it in our gums alike. Unfortunately, collagen supplementation, especially in the form of peptides has been shown to replenish the connective tissue collagen. First, the studies actually studied in the, uh, started in the beauty industry. Why? Because, you know, we all quite care about our face. So uh, I myself actually take collagen peptides daily, and it not only helps, helps me with my skin, it helps me with the gums, but it also helps with joints. Uh, it helps to decrease joint pain. So anybody looking for prevention of gum recession, I highly recommend starting to take collagen supplementation in the form of peptides. Why peptides? Because it's easier on the absorption. Some of the larger collagen, uh, you know, whole collagen strings just don't get absorbed so well. So, so collagen peptides are important. Is there a brand that you recommend? Uh, we have the Orasana brand oh, uh, because I really research also for my own health. Uh, we have the collagen peptides. We actually source them from Germany because they have the best studies on the actual collagen peptide. So there's different length of collagens good for skin, joints, and bone because bone is not just mineral, it's also collagen. So we combine the three different kinds of peptides in our product. It has no additives, no sugar, nothing artificial. I actually mix mine with uh, coffee in the morning. I take a scoop, mix it in my coffee, it's completely tasteless. One of the biggest things that I hear from, from patients is like, oh, collagen tastes horrible. I tried it. You know, and it's true. Some of the ones that you find at the store, it really has a bad smell or flavor. So I really work very hard to bring something that's completely tasteless and actually has scientific evidence that it helps, you know, with all three things. And you can really mix it in any. Okay. This is good stuff. Mm -hmm. All right. Electric versus manual toothbrush. Yeah, I'm glad you brought this up because this <laughs> contributes to recession, actually. <laughs> so the, the rotational type toothbrushes, if you already have recession, stop using them. They're too abrasive. So as they rotate, they actually scrub too hard. Ultrasonic brushes are okay. And especially can be recommended for people that have poor dexterity. You know, if, if it's hard for you to, to hold a brush, it's great to use because it actually creates a disruption in the biofilm past the bristles. Manual brushes work great as well, as well, as long as you're using a soft brush, uh, you know, small circles uh, with the bristles actually into the gum because you do want to clean. Gums can recede from two reasons, Michelle. One is brushing too hard. And the second is not brushing enough, sadly. <laughs> if you're not brushing enough, well, now we have gum inflammation and that gum inflammation will cause the gums to recede. Yeah. All right. After brushing, I do have to mention the water flosser. Uh, I love the water flosser because it cleans great. But the second function that it has is that the water pulsation actually stimulates the collagen to tighten in a gentle way highly recommended for people. Okay. Well, you know, we have one of those and we're going to have to get that thing out again. Thank you for the yeah. reminder. I think it's sitting under the bathroom sink <laughs> in the cabinet yeah. somewhere. Yeah. So I'm, I'm digging it out after we get off this call. Excellent. <laughs> uh, you did ask about treatment. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. So I do want to touch on that because we have some great advances when it comes to um, repairing the gum recession. And I know people that have had gum grafting, know that it can be very painful. The good news is in the last few years, we have advances in platelet-rich fibrin therapy. Platelet-rich fibrin is actually uh, comes from patients' own blood. So we draw blood, we spin it down in a centrifuge, and we collect the growth factors and the fibrin, and we make tissue-like squares, which we actually just tuck under the gum to help to 
correct the gum recession and also thicken the gum. We don't get as much thickening as we do from a gum graft. However, if we treat the recession early enough before it gets to more than three millimeters, this is a great treatment to do because it's less painful and we're not taking gum tissue from somewhere else in the body or the mouth and uh, we get really good results. Wow. This is such great news. I didn't, I did not know this was a thing. You're just really opening my eyes today to all kinds of things. This is great. And I'm sure the person that asked that question is going to be very happy to hear this. So they do use, it's platelet rich plasma from the actual patient. They, they're not using actual stem cell type of technology with that yet. Not yet. Uh, you know, I love stem cells and I, I do uh, use them occasionally, especially in people that don't heal well. However, for tissue thickening, I don't see yet a recommendation for stem cells. It's great, great for bone healing and healing, let's say, necrosis of the jaw and other kind of conditions. Uh, but, uh, you know, PRF or platelet-rich fibrin, which is actually a little bit different than PRP, okay has more growth factors and just more indicated for oral procedures. It's been really good for uh, patients with recession in our practice. Oh, you know, I just, I just thought of one other kind of fun question for you. How often should we throw out a toothbrush? Great question. Well, number one, we have to have a toothbrush that's working. So if you see the bristles starting splaying out, which can happen for some people in a month, then you got to throw it out because it's not working anymore. You're working with bristles that are not even pointing into your gum. They're pointing like outside of the gum. So make sure your bristle anatomy is still straight. Starting to splay, just throw it out and get a new one. And from a um, perspective of bacteria, about every three to four months, we recommend changing it. But if your bristles are, as you say, splaying out after a month, then you're probably brushing too hard. That's exactly right. You're brushing too hard. So in order to correct that, some people just can't, especially, you know, you get, uh, you know, a really strong man with a strong hand. They just can't. (laughs) My recommendation is just go to an ultrasonic brush. So that way it kind of prevents you from scrubbing uh, and you just mostly hold it there and it does the work for you. Okay. Dr. Sanda, we all want a bright white smile. Where do you stand on at-home whitening? <laughs> Great question. You know, like, <laughs> like everybody else, I want a, a nice, bright smile. And um, one of the things that I do every day is the calcium hydroxyapatite powder that I mentioned earlier. The studies show that actually using that, and that helps with strengthening the enamel, actually helps to whiten teeth as well. So now you're getting two for one benefits. Uh, so start with that twice a day, every day. And in the Orasana line, we have the tooth powder that you can actually sprinkle on top of your toothpaste that you already like, or you can use it separately on its own. It cleans the biofilm, it strengthens teeth, and it whitens teeth, which is, which is great. I'm buying, I'm buying some. I, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> uh, Hydrogen peroxide is typically used also to whiten teeth and baking soda. Those are the two things that we can do at home. Baking soda is easy. You can take some, sprinkle it on your toothpaste and use it that way. Don't use it all the time. It can be a little bit too abrasive. So it's okay to use it maybe once or twice a week. Hydrogen peroxide can come in the forms of strips. A lot of people ask me, you know, the strips that you put on the teeth, can those help to whiten? Yes, you can actually get good results with that. Uh, And the nice thing is that the hydrogen peroxide is a little lower in concentration, is around 3%. Uh, So those are okay to use. But again, I wouldn't use it like every day. You know, so once uh, once a week and then depending on how you see the results. But I, I really don't recommend, you know, very strong, products on the teeth because even like let's say a toothpaste with that's a very abrasive can cause loss of enamel it's microns every day but it still will cause loss of enamel okay and and i appreciate you being transparent about that because i actually was using a toothpaste that was you know extra whitening and i was starting to get little sores inside my mouth from it and so yes. i stopped that right away but anyway yeah. yeah. Well, your teeth look beautiful. Oh, nice well, thanks. <laughs> Could be the color <laughs> lipstick. 
Because I was just, I was looking at them this morning. I'm like, eh, they're looking a little dingy right now. All right. I would be remiss if I did not bring up the topic of fillings. Because there are those of us, myself included, that have fillings in our mouth from the 70s. Fillings that I got when maybe I was 10 years old. If they are perfectly intact, is there any issue with them? I don't even know what they're made of, honestly. Yes. Um, And sometimes it's hard to tell. One of the things like, uh, you know, when you do a self-exam, you can look to see, are they silver fillings or are they white fillings? Silver fillings are usually Mm mercury-based, especially in the 70s. There was a lot of mercury being used. I myself had 16 large mercury fillings in my mouth that actually made me toxic. I I started having symptoms like headaches. I, I wasn't feeling well. And sadly for me, I didn't have them removed safely because I didn't know much about it. I, you know, I was in dental school and uh, we're like, ah, they don't look good. You know, I was smiling. I had a mouth roll metal. So I'm like one of my friends removed them and I started getting worse headaches couple years after that, I actually went to a naturopath. She tested my mercury levels and they were through the roof. Oh, you're kidding. Through the roof. And uh, the problem with mercury fillings is that every time we drink something hot, we brush our teeth, the teeth grind together. There's microns of mercury coming off. Some of us are great detoxifiers and they, you know, we throw that mercury right out. But 70% of us are not great detoxifiers. And we retain that mercury in our fatty tissues and our brain. You know, studies on on sheep, for example, have shown that within a month of placing mercury fillings in their teeth, the mercury was everywhere, in the brain, in the liver, in the lungs. It just attaches to the uh, tissues and it stays there. Our body doesn't like to have it in our blood, so it just compartmentalizes it to our organs. And mercury toxicity is linked to, you know, a lot of neurological symptoms, uh, but also lately actually heart issues. And especially it seems to go hand in hand with people suffering from candida overgrowth. So mercury fillings, I recommend uh, number one, toxicity testing, because it does affect the body. Mm -hmm. Even if they're intact, they still can cause a problem. Maybe, Maybe not for the teeth, but for the rest of the organs. And secondly, make sure you have them removed safely by a biological dentist so you don't have, like me, a toxicity. Because as we cut into the mercury filling, the vapors of mercury get released. And if they're not captured safely during this process, we end up inhaling it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we actually get worse in terms of toxicity. So my association, IAOMT, uh, and by the way, on IAOMT.org, you can find a biological dentist, you know, in your area that can do this safe mercury removal. Uh, they have a special technique and they certify dentists to make sure that, uh, you know, when we remove the mercury, we don't get intoxicated. And not just the patients, but the assistant and the doctor. Yeah, I was going to ask if if you're inhaling it, they would too. Well, they're yes. usually pretty well protected, but I guess that doesn't matter if if it's that toxic. <laughs> It does. Yeah, it does matter. We actually have gas masks that we wear during the whole process to prevent us from inhaling the mercury vapor. And it does work. It's a technique that's proven to keep us safe, you know, from mercury toxicity. Okay, I'm doing the math. I've I've had these fillings for 50 years. So be interesting. I I think what I would start for you is um, to test your body of mercury. Maybe you are one of those great detoxifiers that, you know, mercury comes off and then it's not in your body, Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, which is great. Okay. But uh, we don't know until we test. Ah, It's always a learning with this show. I'm telling you, this is so great. Now, you were asking me about white fillings, as I think. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, it, the difference, because I know my kids, I think their fillings are more of a white or a plastic or something. Yeah, and plastic is correct, because a lot of the white fillings out there are made out of plastic. And the initial white fillings were plastic. The latest generation fillings are filled with ceramic particles, and they're BPA-free. So what's the problem with plastic fillings? They're filled with BPA. <laughs> <laughs> and your dentist will not tell you. And, you know, to tell you the truth, I, like I talked to some dentists and they have no idea if they have plastic, you know, like if it is BPA filling or not. And we all know BPA, bisphenol A, it's a carcinogen. 
that's the problem with it. And it's being taken out of a lot of plastic bottles, you know, uh, and being replaced because of the issues with it. It's an endocrine disruptor. So unfortunately, BPA is present in a lot of dental material, including people that have dentures, people maybe that have partial dentures. It can be in night guards, for example. So at night, we end up actually swallowing BPA. So it's very, very important to, you know, get, get yourself educated and ask the dentist, is this BPA free? Because there are products out there that are BPA free today. Oh my so, gosh. <laughs> unfortunately, it's hard to tell. You won't be able to look at a white filling and say, is this with BPA or not? Plastic fillings will break down more than ceramic fillings. And the ceramic fillings, a lot of the great products uh, also come from Germany. So just like the collagen and, uh, you know, there, because it's 70% filled with ceramic, they withstand a lot longer and they don't shrink, you know, when we drink hot fluids or cold, like the plastic ones. Like Germany seems to have a lot of great purity laws. And I think that's reflected in their technology, just the way they develop products now. Definitely. I agree with you. So um, I do go to European conferences to find out, you know, what they have over there because, and we do have distributors here in the United States that bring products from over there, especially when we talk about biocompatible products. This is hugely important. You know, if you're planning on having a filling in, in your mouth and you especially have different allergies to different things, actually oral dental work can cause you to feel worse. So for our patients, we do a biocompatibility test so we can personalize the dentistry. Uh, you know, to, to you as an individual. What are some of the other technologies out there that you're using to help diagnose possible issues? Because I know you speak a lot about uh, cavitations in the jaw and the mouth. What's on the horizon? What gets you excited? What gets me excited is being able to see inside the jawbone and really fully diagnosing. And for me to be able to see that, Comb beam CT scans have been a huge technological advancement to help me as a doctor to properly diagnose patients that are not feeling well. When we look at two-dimensional x-rays, which more than 80% of dentists are using today, comb beam 3D technology is still not the norm, but it will be one day. 2D x-rays really only diagnose about 50 to 55% of problems, according to studies. Comb beam CT scan, we diagnose 100% of the problems. Oh, wow. It's a huge difference. So if you don't feel well, you have some pain, and your dentist tells you, I don't see anything. I recommend finding a biological dentist who can take a comb beam CT scan to really diagnose the full jaw, the sinuses, the teeth especially areas where teeth have been extracted or removed. That's the cavitations you were talking about. Mm -hmm. Those are silent chronic infections that can live in your jawbone that can cause neurological symptoms. It can cause a tightening of the throat. Uh, it can cause phantom pain, um, increased inflammation. Uh, some patients actually come in and say, you know what? My physician says I have a low-grade bacterial infection, but they can't figure out where it is. Oftentimes, it's in the jaw. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you have uh, a patient success story that you want to share? Uh, definitely. And uh, on our website at beverlyhillsdentalhealth.com, uh, you know, we have a few patients that so graciously have done video testimonials for us. And one that comes to mind is um, the story of Angela. She's a Reiki practitioner. And she was really sick. She kept uh, getting... Um, attacks where she would end up in the emergency room. They didn't know what was wrong with her. She started losing a lot of weight. The only foods she could eat is meat. That's the only thing her body could tolerate is actually meat. Hmm. And uh, when I saw her, I did a comb beam CT scan. She had some cavitations in her jawbone and she actually had a root canal treated tooth that when I took off, when the crown came off, it was full of mold underneath. Oh, wow. And she did have a high mold level. And a lot of people don't realize that root canal treated teeth can actually be a, a big source of bacteria and mold, you know, in their body. And some people are more sensitive than others. We see patients with root canal teeth, no problems. And some, they have one root canal tooth and they feel really sick. 
Hmm. So uh, we ended up removing that tooth. We removed the cavitations. And today, you know, she's feeling much better. Of course, you know, she got the help of her integrative physician to detoxify the rest of the body after the source of the bacteria was gone and the mold. And, you know, she's back to her normal life. And this is what she talks about in her testimonial, how, you know, she's just grateful to be able to do everyday chores, yeah. like cleaning her house and cooking her own food, which she wasn't even able to do prior to us treating her. It, it's, it's changed her life. I mean, and I said that at the yeah. outset is when your mouth is hurting, it's like having chronic pain really anywhere, but it affects so much. I mean, it affects your smile, it affects how you eat. I mean, it can affect your sleep. It's, it's just amazing. Yes. And really that's what we stand for, you know, as biological dentists, we look to see what in the mouth is causing you not to feel well. We stand for, you know, optimum health and making choices that are, uh, you know, really conducive to optimum health and longevity. Well, speaking of optimum health and longevity, what is one of your own personal pillars of self-care? <laughs> That's a great question because, you know, I get, um, I multitask, you know, like a lot of women out there. <laughs> so yeah. it's so easy to give so much of me, you know, all the time. And not to take the time to do self-care. That's one of my biggest things, challenges that I'm working on to really give myself more self-care to recharge my batteries so that I can give as much as I can to help patients heal. You can't pour from an empty cup. Well, med <laughs> yes. <laughs> Meditation is a big thing for me. And uh, taking the time, even though through a busy day, to even find five minutes where I can close my eyes, recenter, you know, connect to my heart and, and ground myself and, and really come from, you know, a place of love with an open heart to deal with problems and not, you know, be reactive, uh, you know, in, in stressful situations. I love that. I think that's, that's yeah. That's great. Um. One very last question. I would love for you to tell our listeners where they can find you and also Orasana, your company. So you can find us on you know, my podcast, uh, The Holistic Dentistry Show, if you'd like to find out more about holistic dentistry. And also at uh, orasana.com. And if you're interested in the microbiome of the mouth, finding out how probiotics really help our health, I have a great resource page there in which I, sp I post uh, recent articles and what's new in the probiotic world, because we have new research coming up every day on, on how these little bacteria really help our life and our oral health. And uh, we're offering a special uh, discount for our, your listeners as a thank you for listening uh, in uh, oral health, natural oral health, uh, probiotics, um, calcium hydroxy appetite products that can really help keep your mouth healthy and strong for years to come. Wonderful. And again, I'll put all that in the show notes so people have it. Dr. Sonda, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you being a guest today. Thank you, Michelle. It's been a pleasure. Follow Asking for a Friend on social media outlets and provide a review and share this show wherever you get your podcasts. Reviews and sharing help us grow. 